Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? So blessed. It's good. It's God has been to me. I can't afford not to praise his name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God. Give God the glory. Bow your heads with me and then remain standing for the reading of the word as we prepare now to hear God's instruction over our life. Almighty and everlasting thou art God. Lord, before the mountains and the hills were brought forth, Lord, before the earth was established, you were God. You were God all by yourself. You didn't need anyone else. God, you saw fit to create humankind in your image. Lord, in your image, you created us, O oh God. And God, we're here today. We're here, Lord. Not many, we're not here. Those that are here right now, we're not the first. God, and we give thanks, and we're not the last. God, help us to know that we are just travelers passing through this barren land. God, help us to understand, Lord, that, Lord, we wouldn't be able to get up this morning. Lord, we wouldn't be able to open our mouths, our eyes, Lord, if it had not been for you on our side. Somebody, oh God, under the sound of my voice, wouldn't be here right now if you hadn't worked a miracle in their life. Somebody, Lord, wouldn't be able to give to you. They wouldn't be able to go on push pay or they wouldn't be able to go on cash app, Lord. They wouldn't have cash in their front, back, or anywhere else pocket, Lord, if it had not been for your grace and your mercy. So God, we cry out to you. Thank you, O oh Lord, for everything you've done. Now, Lord, your word is before us. I pray, Lord, that you open our eyes that we might see, open our ears that we might hear. Lord, pierce our hearts that we might obey your word. For your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. God, your word sustains us every day. When things don't go well, your word is there to remind us that we are your children and you are our God. Grant it now, Lord, for in the mighty name of Jesus, we give thanks and praise. And the people of Journey said, amen, amen, amen. Our scripture reading this morning, Deuteronomy chapter 2, beginning in the second verse through the seventh verse, according to the amplified version of our Bibles, Deuteronomy Two, beginning in the second verse through the seventh verse. And now hear these words of our Lord. And the Lord spoke to me, saying, You have circled this mountain long enough. Turn northward and command the people, saying, You are passing through the territory of your brothers, the sons of Esau, the Edomites, who live in the land of Seir, and they will be afraid of you, so be very careful. Listen to what God says. Do not provoke them, for I will not give you any of their land, not even as little as a footstep, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau as a possession. You shall buy food from them with money so that you may have something to eat. Eat and you shall also buy water from them with money so that you may have something to drink. For the Lord your God has blessed you. Somebody say, I'm blessed. The Lord your God has blessed you in all that you have done. He has known about your wanderings through this great wilderness. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you. And you have lacked 
nothing. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. All these years, the Lord has been with you, and you have lacked nothing. But journey, this is the word of God for us, and we are the people of God, and our response this morning is, thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Why we can't stay here. The second week of our series during this Black History Month, well, God is pointing to us saying why we can't stay here, particularly going around in circles. Somebody say it's time to stop going around in circles. I want to start this morning with a video presentation. Last Sunday, I talked about and referenced Fannie Lou Hamer, who was known African-American activist, known for her fighting for social justice and voter rights down in the delta of the Mississippi. And last Sunday, we, we ended the message saying, every now and then in this life, in order to go forward, you got to get to a point where you what? Sick and tired of what? Amen, amen. Sick and tired over the mess in our life, over being sick and tired. So I want to begin this morning with that video of her being a woman of color, being educated, having the courage to go and speak up for our, somebody say our, right. The testimony before the Credentials Committee, the FDP had a lineup of very different people. They had Rita Schwerner, the widow of Mickey, who had been killed in Neshoba County. They had Martin Luther King. Everybody knew King. The seating of the delegation from the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party has political and moral significance far beyond the borders of Mississippi are the halls of this convention. But the highlight of the testimony was that of Fannie Lou Hamer. The sharecropper who had been evicted from her plantation had come to s symbolize the Mississippi movement. Mr. Chairman, and to the Credentials Committee, it was the 31st of August in 1962 that 18 of us traveled 26 miles to the county courthouse in Indianola to try to register to become first-class citizens. We was met in Indianola with, by policemen. The president, Lyndon Johnson, he's not <laughs> afraid of Martin Luther King's testimony. He's afraid of Fannie Lou Hamer's testimony. And so he decides that the country should not see her testify live. Johnson is in the White House, and he convened an impromptu press conference. We will return to this scene in Atlantic City, but now we switch to the White House and NBC's Robert Gorelsky. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. On this day, nine months ago. He did it knowing that they would break away, thinking he might announce who his choice of vice president was going to be. Instead, he gets up there and he announces, get this, he announces that it's nine months to the day since, since Governor Connolly, who was there, was shot along with President Kennedy. So he announced a nine-month anniversary. Everybody's scratching their heads. Thank you very much. And then he leaves. And by that time, Annie Lou Hamer's testimony was over. However, it backfired on Johnson because it became a story that she had been taken off television and in the news that night and f for days afterwards, they replayed her testimony. I was carried to the county jail and put in the booking room. They left some of the people in the booking room and began to place us in sale. She had Mississippi in her bones. Martin Luther King or the SNCC field secretaries, uh, they couldn't 
do what Fannie Lou Hamer did. They couldn't be a sharecropper and express what it meant, right? And that's what Fannie Lou Hamer um, did. And it wasn't too long before three white men came to my cell. One of these men was a state highway patrol. He said, we're going to make you wish you were dead. Amen. Seems like we've seen this story before. Amen. Fannie Lou Hamer testifying on behalf of each and every one of us. Sounds like we have seen it and heard it before. The narrative says that the President Lyndon Johnson did not want her story to be seen by the people. Sounds familiar. Amen. Amen. Martin King said it very plainly that if you don't know and remember your past, you are bound to repeat it. If you don't remember, if you don't know the stories of old, you are bound to repeat it. If you are in your teenage years and you are you're in your 20s and you are in your 30s, I'm about to get real loud, and you don't understand you're in your 40s and you watch more TV and you have Google and social media and you don't understand your past, you are bound to repeat it. If you're going to institution that were built on slave land and you had to pay a king's ransom and your great-grandparents, your ancestors picked cotton on that land and you had to be, had to pay tuition and get a student loan, amen. You don't really understand. Mm. Others would have went for free. I'm way off script. According to capitalist society, you would have gone for free. Your ancestors pay if, you, if, they, if they pick cotton on them same lands. If your theme, and I'm going to step out, I ain't trying to offend nobody, is forever to thee, amen. I need you to understand, will you be forever loyal to me if I'm forever loyal to thee? Fannie Lou Hamer took a stand for you and for me. And it was interesting, he said, the president was not afraid of Dr. Martin Luther King, but no, he did not want to see that sharecropper who worked the land in order to live on the land. And the, and the agreement was that after you work the land, just Google sharecropping, amen, Google it. After a while, after you work that land, what was supposed to happen? You were supposed to work and earn enough in order to own the land, but many worked the land and never got the ownership papers for the land. And now some say that there should not be any reparations. I want somebody that's running for the top office in America to at least admit that we need to be truer to what we said on paper even if we can't get it done at least say it to me and have the unmitigated goal to say it before your friends I have a lot of friends of mixed ancestry and there are a lot of meetings being held and they will invite me to the meetings and say we need you there as a minority and I say to my friends I need you to go to your friends that are in the majority I need white to speak to white and I'm my brown I'll speak to brown but I need you to speak you know how I feel I'm not going to spend any more time and any more breath with all of the resources matter of fact you were there you were a part of it amen It's like, it's like sometimes men, you know, you know, men and our wives say, you don't know how I feel. It, it, most of us, we really know. We just ignore it, amen. <laughs> so we know, just don't make us. Just don't. You, 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 you. There comes a time when we must hear the words of responsibility and accountability that Fannie Lou Hamer 
felt where we say, you know what, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And if you're at that point, here's the plan. It's time for us to go and to stand and continue to represent Jesus Christ and our God to continue to be our best selves because we have a tradition of a people that have stood in the midst of trying times and travail and tribulation and even the harder, the more harder the pressure got, they did not give in, but they stood up and represented something and my call and my challenge to you and your best friend and your first cousin and your son and your daughter is that you will have conversations around the table as to how you are living out your best self and to know the story because if you don't know your past you are bound to repeat it Israel in our text this morning was repeating their pass over and over and over again. They were going around in circles, amen? And God spoke to them as they were there wandering in the red, uh, wandering there in the wilderness as they had, had crossed over the Red Sea. And the Lord said to them, you have circled this mountain long enough. You've been going around in circles long enough. You've been spinning your wheels long enough. You've been wasting your time and my time praying for stuff that you ain't really going to do long enough. You've been holding up you and generations of your family long enough. You've been sitting on the pot. Amen. Children Church downstairs. I can really go. I can really get out there and go PG-13. You've been sitting on the pot. Come on, somebody, Grandma. You knew that. You've been sitting on the pot long enough. It's time for you to what? It or go forward. Amen. Get up and move. Somebody, child, just got party trained. Amen. Do it and move on. Some families, they have a one bathroom, amen. You couldn't hold up in there. Some of you spoil. You don't know. You got four or five bathrooms in your house. But back in the day, it wasn't but one. You need to get in there, get your business done, and get out the way so somebody else can get in there and get their business. God said to the Israelites, you have circled this mountain long enough. Now it's time to go forward, amen. Tell somebody close to you, it's time to go forward. You, you've, been, you've been circling long enough. Does this sound like our spiritual lives sometimes? Is this a call to us spiritually? Is this a call to us to mature in Christ? This is the year 2020. Many have deemed it the year of, of clarity, the year of seeing clearly what is God trying to show you. And some of us now, we are at an age and we have so much assistance. We got bifocals, trifocals, transition lens. We have all kinds of surgeries, cataracts with them, dark glasses, and can't look for two or three hours trying to get good eyesight and physical sight. And God is saying, you may look good physically getting two pair for one with your glasses but God is saying spiritually you are blind and I need you to see that which is right before you you might be physically 2020 but spiritually you need an adjustment amen somebody came this morning for an adjustment with your spiritual eyesight. You're not seeing clearly what God is doing. You're not seeing clearly all that you can be because you need a spiritual adjustment. And God is saying, if you allow me to put some drops of my oil in your eyes, some anointing on your life, if you allow me to get in the inside of your life and put some anointing, then you will have something spiritually that you can get done and you can see others better in your life, you need the anointing in your eyes and say, God, if you anoint my eyes, the scales will fall from my eyes and things I used to do, I won't do no more. The hell I used to raise, I won't raise no more. And I can be who you call me to be. You need some spiritual anointing in your eyes. Oh, bless his name. 
Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning because I know that we may have some scales on our eyes and we can't see what God is doing. We can't see where God is trying to lead us, but we're still going around. You wouldn't let anybody drive you if they had their hands covering their eyes. Now, Curtis drove me. I said, Curtis, my brother, he drove me. He drove me on 26 at 85 and got me to Charleston in an hour and a half. <laughs> with, with Sheriff, he never took his eyes off the road. I was talking to him. I was scratching. I was listening to the radio. I was drinking coffee. But he kept his eyes on the prize. God is trying to say to somebody, you got to get your eyes back on the prize. Else you're going to miss what's coming to you spiritually. You can be blinded spiritually. You can miss. I meet so many people and I meet so many young folk and that's my passion to try to help those uh, that have so much, so much more and so many advantages uh, that generations before us never had. And I'm climbing and I'm, and I'm singing and I'm crying out and praying and pouring out oil saying do not miss miss the blessing that God has in your life. Oh yeah, my people suffer. The scripture says because they have no vision. My people suffer for lack of knowledge, but we are not suffering from lack of knowledge only. There comes a time when we suffer from lack of obedience. The story of Israel is a story of the children of Israel taking 40 years to make a journey that should have took them two weeks. All right, Black History Month, I can talk all Black History. Anybody grew up, your mommy sent you to the store? You know, I'm gonna pick on some folk, amen. Bubba, when you had to walk to the store, Teresa, Carol, you had to walk to the store. I ain't talking you drove here. You walked. You were there in that big city and you had to walk. Amen. Dr. Jay, you had to walk. And, and you know what? The old folk, they knew how long it was going to take you to get there. Amen. <laughs> Richard, they knew how long down there in Florence County. They knew how long, Dean, it was going to take you to get there. They knew if you walked straight to the store, what? If you went by your friend's house. Amen. Fellas, if you stop by your girlfriend's house, got some of that penny candy. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Ten cent, ten penny candy. That's ten girls you can give it out to. <laughs> yeah, Jolly Ranchers. Amen. Yeah, yeah. No, Mary Jane's. Mary Jane. There ain't no Jolly Ranch out there. Mary Jane. Hey, hey, amen. I'm penny cooking. And, 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 and they knew that you had, if you came late, they knew you might have come back with what you were supposed to have, but they knew it should have taken you an approximate amount of time. Israel took 40 years what should have taken them two weeks. This is a story about how the blessing that we've been praying for is waiting on us to show up spiritually to get it. You can't delay, you can't stray, you can't walk away from it, you can't send somebody else to get it. Amazon cannot deliver it, it's not overnight, it, it will not be rushed to you. The blessing that God and that you've been praying for and God is placing right there, but God is saying, I'm waiting on you to come and claim what's rightfully yours. It's not that God is not able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we could ever imagine, but God is saying, I'm waiting on you uh, to trust the fact that I can do exceedingly abundantly more than you could ever imagine. I'm waiting on you uh, to step out on faith and believe uh, that I am an incomparable God and there is nothing too hard for me. Israel wandered 40 years and during that time, a lot of things happen. You know, when you get off course, a lot of things happen. And sometimes one of the things that happens, our belief and our trust in God gets tested. We say, Lord, I don't, I don't, I've been out here so long, I don't even know if you're able. 
I don't even know if you still can do what you say you're going to do. I doubt it, Lord. And then some of us get cynical. You know, we get in crowds and get, get cynical about the Lord. Well, you know, God is good. God, why he let, let, let uh, bad things happen to good people? Amen. <laughs> well, Jesus said, who, who amongst you is really good anyway? Who all that good? Maybe your theology is off. You know, if the one of the most perfect persons ever walked the face of this earth had to be crucified, maybe there's some days of crucifixion coming for you and I. But do God, it's God saying, I need you to trust me through your crucifixion. Lord, if you're so good, why am I sick? Maybe God wants us to know that he has healing in the hem of his garment. He didn't have a pension to make life hard for us, but God wants to know, are you going to trust me during the good times like you trust me in the bad times? Are you going to trust me when things are not going well? Are you going to throw up your hands and say, Lord, I'm going to try my way and I'm going to do my thing and I'm going to act the way I want to act? Or are we going to lean unto his understanding and in all that ways acknowledge and watch him direct our paths. Mm, sometimes when you get off course you start pointing the thing, pink finger at other folk as to why you're off course. You stop taking responsibility for yourself and you start pointing to other people. The wilderness experience is a real experience when we are trapped in the mundaneness of today, when we are trapped in the mundaneness of our own thinking, which is limited, and I'm not trying to put anybody down. I'm really trying to pick you up. If you stop trusting in what you think and acknowledge to God that God, I'm a trust what I know. You know I'm not calling you stupid. I know you got a BS and a BA and a MA and a MD and a PhD but I'm here to tell you that there's one that has more books written and more books sold than any other book and if you don't have a PhD a God believing degree in the word of God you don't know anything hmm. if you don't know it ain't such a thing as two Corinthians well, but you want to be my God. Hey, 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 hey. Even the old folk understood that, that there were more, that there's more, that there's more to God if we are willing to trust him when we are trapped in the mundaneness of today and fail to see the new life in Christ tomorrow. The wilderness experience is real. We, we get lost, we get disoriented, we start blaming others and Here's the other thing, and I'm going to slow down to say this. We get caught up in self-help theology. Everything about you. Uh, that's why I said, if, if, if you had a problem giving something out of your closet to the yard sale giveaway, you caught up in self-help. Amen. You ain't willing to help nobody else because you think you're going to starve to death. And guess what? You starving to death anyway. Poverty at your door, just like it was at Ananias and Sapphira's door. If you can't ever find time to give of your best for somebody else and not expecting anything back, you're not going to love nobody because they don't love you the way you want to love. That isn't what the Bible said. The Bible said, love ye one another just as much as God has loved you. God is the standard for love. And if you haven't stepped out on radical faith and say, I'm going to love everybody beyond what they may do and beyond what they may be, and it doesn't mean I got to be vulnerable. Now get that right. Somebody listen to me right now. God didn't say be vulnerable or be no foot mat, but he did say give unconditional love because you might give the wrong kind of conditional love, the love that bling bling and the love that say the right thing but when you're down and out and you need somebody there, when you're down to your last dime, when you're hooked up to a machine and the ambulance sirens are ringing and you need somebody to come by your side, when you had a moral slip and you're about to go to jail and you need somebody to stand with you in the courtroom that ain't caught up on charges themselves you're going to need the unconditional love of God well God is saying to somebody right now it's time to get to moving it's time to get to moving my favorite show Martin anybody remember Martin the show amen you got to get to the point in your life like Martin 
like Fannie Lou Hamer did when she was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And at Martin's house, when folk would tick him off David, he had a familiar expression. What did he say? Get the stepping, amen. God is trying to say to somebody right now, it's time to get the stepping. You've been wandering around. You've been slipping and sliding. You've been spinning your wheels long enough. And God is saying to every trial and tribulation in your life, he's saying to every knucklehead that's holding you down, time to get the stepping. Step, step. In your way. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. God is telling somebody, time to get to stepping. Step on out on faith. Step on out on belief. Step on out on trust. You've been wandering. You've been wandering around this mountain long enough. You've been hanging out, journeying, going around in circles long enough. Spiritually, spiritually, not able to go forward. You're in a spiritual funk spiritual funk. You ever prayed sometime and seemed like your prayer didn't go no further than the ceiling? Jesus said if you just have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to your mountain, move from here to there. I have a personal challenge. If you're under the age of 30, come on. Come on, step on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, if you're under the age of 30, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give my hand, somebody, give my hand. You're not shocked that they're moving, are you? If you're under the age of 30, come on. Come on, 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 come on. If you're under the age of 30, come on, move like you're under the age of 30. If you're my age, move slow. But if you're your age, you ought to move fast. If I didn't have nothing at that age, I had fertility. I was able to move and glide and go. If you're under the age of 30, I got a challenge for you. Lay shepherds, get in place, please. Somebody going to need prayer this morning. Somebody going to need prayer. The Holy Spirit is moving. A personal challenge for you, Deanna. I got a, I got a personal challenge for you, Jay. I got a personal challenge. I got a personal challenge for you, Andy. I, I got a personal challenge for you. That you are standing on the shoulders of ancestors. How many have been to college? Let me go. How many have been to college? All right. Hold up your hand. You've been to college. You've got some poor parents out there. How many of you want to go to college? You ain't been, but you're going. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Watch this, watch this, watch this. You, you are just two or three generations removed from being born in slavery. Many of you didn't have grandparents. And if you had a grandparent, definitely not a great-grandparent. Not a great-great that had a college education. Some didn't get to high school. If some of them could wake up from the grave right now and see where you're living, they fall back dead. Amen. I got a challenge for you. I got a challenge for you. And that is, is that you outwork and you outachieve your mama and your daddy. Outdo them. I'll do them. I'm going to stay on your case. You might as well get ready to block my phone. Guess what? I don't care. I, I did what I needed to do. I can afford two or three cell phones. Amen. I'll get the robocall. I'll get the telemarketer. 
Outdo your mother and father. Outdo your grandparents. That means that you need to build some schools. You need to build some HBCUs. That means you need to start some monopoly-owned businesses. And what that means is you got to get up in the morning before 8 o'clock. The first accomplishment you make is to make your bed. Amen. Turn around and make your bed. The next one, brush your teeth, wash your face, brush it good. Because when you get up in my face, I want it to be a good smelling conversation. Amen. Make sure you take last night off ya. Oh, help me, help me, help me, Holy Ghost. And then when you go to class, stay awake. Stay awake. Stay awake. Because, you know, education costs. Tuition costs, high school costs, college costs. But you know what they have not yet put a price on? That's ignorance. Ignorance will cost you to the day you die. What you don't know, you'll pay for. So I got a challenge for you. Number one was what? The outdo what? Outdo who? Mom and dad, you need to tell them too. Say, I'm going to outdo you. I'm going to make more than you. Amen. Scare them tomorrow. Wake them up tomorrow. Wake them up. Be standing there. Say, what you need me to do today? I'm on my way to school. Don't have them in there knocking on your door. Take the door off. So I'm going to tell up your house and I'm about to get mine. Amen. Don't plan to live there forever because we're going to talk about you. Amen. We'll say, you still there? Yeah, we still there. And then, and then if you are there, if you are there, don't come in there with an attitude. Amen. Because that just don't work. If you are there, don't come in there with attitude. Because in my family, I got a built-in attitude. Amen. I, gotta, I come in, I got the most attitude, Sheriff, in my house. Yeah, I got more attitude than anybody because I got that weight on me. Amen. Amen. I know what it's like to go to the account and be about to go out to eat, Tammy. I know what it's like, David Baker. I know what it's like to be Cleve. I know what it's like to about to be go shopping and just, oh, Lord, let me go back out to the car. Amen. I got the most attitude. So if you're up in there and if God has blessed you with parents or grandparents that are helping you, do yourself a favor and them and have the best expression of yourself that you can. That was one. Number two. One more time, I need you to go to class. I need you to go to class. Know that HBCUs, unlike one of the most unqualified um, secretaries of education said, HBCUs were not built to give black folk options. They were built because of my father who wanted to go to the University of South Carolina, who was a proud graduate of Allen University, when he went to register, they said to him, you might be a janitor here, but you'll never attend. True story. So he was determined until the day he died that he was going to earn as much as he could and hold on to it and pass it on. So know that wherever you go into school, wherever you can get in, get in, whether it's Midlands Tech, Bottom Tech, Upper Tech, wherever the tech is, USC, Clemson, Claflin, SC State, go and stay awake. Get your education. And then third, I need you to start some businesses. Amen. Learn to do something with your hands. Now, your business plan needs to include several options. And I know you're hearing all the time, multiple streams of income. Pastor Ashley got a simpler method. I wasn't that advanced. I'm saying get one good one first. Amen. Get a good one first. Amen. Get a good one. Get a good pair and then hold on to it and work the other one. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's old school there. Now that's old. I hope y'all got your phones out there. Get a good one. What I say? Get a good one. Everybody say get a good one. And then work on the other one after hours. Amen. That's why you're going to be awake. That's why you're young. You ain't got to worry about falling asleep like I do in meetings right now. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Give them a hand. I love y'all. I love y'all. Can I get these persons anointed? Can I get them anointed? Can I get them anointed this morning? Can I get them anointed? I want an anointing on every child under the age of 30. And I'm praying right now, if you bow your heads with me, that you receive this gift on your life. Know that Journey United Methodist Church loves you. Know that your pastor and your parents love you. Know that God has a calling on your life, and he doesn't want you 
to go around in circles. But he wants you to have something. God wants you to be the head and not the tail. He wants you to know his word and to attend church. And I want to thank you so much for y'all being here today. Journey, I didn't even know we had this many kids under the age of 30. Amen. I didn't even know in children's churches downstairs. I know God is up to something. And I know the blessings that God wants for us is right here. I need you all. I forgot. Oh, how y'all let me forget? Y'all sleeping on me. Anybody over 18, hold up your hand. Hold up your hand. If you're not registered to vote, put your hand down. If you're not registered to vote. All right. If you're not registered to vote, Beverly Frosting, come. Come on. She, <laughs> she votes. She got on a fur coat. See how good God is? Amen. Vote for a candidate gonna help you have a fur coat. Amen. I need to get your names. If you'll give me a writing pad to get their names, if you're not registered to vote, we're gonna get you registered. Thank you. She's gonna get you registered before the end of the week. Thank you. If you'll just stand over there on the side, right where Dean is on the side, and we're gonna get you registered to vote if you're not, if you're not yet. Now, now, Journey, if you know someone that's not registered to vote, and you can get me their contact information. What we're going to do is we're going to send them the voter registration form in the mail. How about that? How about that? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Give them another hand. Y'all may be seated. Y'all may be seated. I thank y'all for coming. I thank y'all for coming. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Will you stand this morning, Journey? Just remain standing. The doors of the church are open. I just want to. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you've not joined the church, if you've not given me your hand and given God your heart, I don't want you to leave. You see what kind of church you can be a part of, a mountain-moving church. I'm not going to allow you to stand still. I'm not going to allow you. Nobody's going to allow you. We're going to pray that as you move, every step you take, every move you make, God is going to bless you if you've not joined. If you want to come right now, I'm ready to receive you. Give me your hand. Give God your heart. Oh, I, I just want you. The doors of the church are open. You, Lord. Can anybody testify that he's been so good? Has he been good? Has he made a way? Has he turned your midnight in the day, Lord, you've been? Oh, yes, you have. You've been my mother. You've been my father. Yeah, yeah, you helped me. You helped me graduate college when I didn't know how I was going to do it, Lord. You healed me of sickness, Lord. You've been so good. Oh, yes, you have. And right now, I want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Anybody know he's a way maker? If you know he's a way maker, just wave your hand. You made a way. Hey, 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 hey. You made a way. You made a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you made a way.
special guest this morning, we just invite you to join us in the back and journey as you have received every, every week. It seems that if God is sending persons here that represent campaigns, this is how we affect change in our community. You need to understand what you need to say to them. If there's one thing you can take right now, everybody say Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Sometimes all you have to do is say, ask them where they stand on that issue. Ask them where they stand. That issue includes you to, to love kindness and to do mercy and to have justice. Ask them about issues of people that look like you. And then, and then let me go further. Let me go further and say, can you say it? Can you say it? Can you say black person? Can you say African American? Let me tell you. Now come on, somebody. Come on. Everybody that has been in love, hold up your hand. Amen. Everybody been in love. Now, you remember the Fonz? You remember Fonz on Happy Days when, when Fonz have to say, I love you? You need somebody. If they love you, say it. Right? Say what? I love you. Don't beat around the bush. If they can't say your name, then you ought to have a problem with them. I'm giving you politics one-on-one. -on -one, and politics is not a dirty word. All politics is, is two people getting together to accomplish a common goal. Amen. That's all it is. But they train us that you can't talk that. That's because they want to train it out of you. Now, let me go up back to the stage. I hope y'all hang in here for a minute. Now you have one of the biggest, after all them years, can't mix politics and religion. Can't mix politics and religion. Well, thank God your pastor went to a seminary that understood we're going to open the book and read it. Now you have one of the biggest religious organization, evangelicals, that are back in presidential campaign. At one, once they got us to sit down on our hands and act like we can't talk about it, then they rose up and said, we're going to put whoever we want. To, and then they say, it doesn't matter what he does morally. We don't need him to teach Sunday school. We don't need him to be our priest or prophet. You see what I'm saying? Don't fall for the okie doke else I'm going to have a problem with you. This is the place where we've always had a voice. And that's why Journey is a responsible church. It ain't about self-help. It's about helping your neighbor. It's about doing love and acting mercy and walking humbly with your God. It's about God, not about me, but what can I do to help somebody to get the way I am. It's not about me getting mine and going home with mine. It's about being a blessing to my community. It's not about me and my family eating. It's about everybody eating. And when we all get full, God will say, I'm well pleased. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling, unto him who's able to present you without spot or blemish in his presence to the only God and glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Be the majesty, power, and authority before all time, now and forever. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen one more time. Come greet our representatives this morning. Amen.